Hi there, welcome back. If you've been following this series, this restoration series, you'll know that we've uh, still got one very important part to do. And it's uh, really the final part of the restoration as regards the functionality of the radio. And that is the FM section. Now the FM section, which is inside this can here, is really the front end that we're talking about because the FM section from when it comes out of this can and goes to the selector switch, when you choose one of the switches, uh, FM versus AM, everything else beyond that point is actually common to what we've already checked. Now, admittedly, the uh, IF transformers that it goes through, or rather that affect the signal of the FM, are different to the uh, AM ones, but they are in series. So if we've checked continuity on the, the part of the circuit from the selector switch onwards, we know that it's okay for FM as well. There'll also uh, be some checking at the discriminator section where the signal is detected and uh, converted to audio. But the first thing we need to do is look at this front end because this front end, which has no tube at the moment, is actually the part that um, raised a bit of concern when we looked at this in the first video, uh, because there was a charred resistor in the power supply section, the resistor that actually supplies high voltage to the circuit. And that's a resistor over there. Now, as you can see, this is not an original component. This one's been swapped out and it's obviously been subjected to quite a bit of an excessive current here because it's all charred. If I'm not mistaken, if I recall correctly, this thing actually measures fine. It's a 2.2K resistor according to the schematic. So it isn't completely open or shorted, but it's definitely seen better days. Now this tells us that this part of the circuit, the front end, has, has drawn excessive current at least twice because this replacement was put in because the other resistor must have burned out. And then this one went and nearly burnt out as well. So there was obviously something wrong with this front end. It could be something as simple as the tube started uh, shorting or partially shorting and drawing too much current because this resistor is about uh, what's well, about a two watt resistor if I'm not mistaken it's at least a one watt resistor just looking at the size and according to the schematic that part of the circuit should draw 9.5 milliamps now 9.5 milliamps through a 2.2k resistor means approximately 0.2 watts so this resistor is definitely overrated as far as power is concerned. Um, the power rating shouldn't have been the problem. It's definitely the, the current that that section drew that's the problem. And it should be dropping, uh, what is it, uh, 9.5 milliamps across 2.2K is approximately 20 volts. We should get a difference of about, about 20 volts on there, and we can actually check that later on. But what I first want to do is I want to see if I can't check some of the components or the connections inside this uh, front end without removing the cover. There is actually one screw here, which means you can simply remove the top cover. I'm gonna see if that's really necessary. I prefer to work on these without invasion because these things are very, very sensitive inside. They're higher frequencies, so it's nothing uh, out of this world, but it's definitely something that you may wanna try and avoid if you can. I certainly do. And as I said, the problem may be as simple as the tube drawing too much current, then we don't need to go in there. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through the schematic and check as much as we can on this uh, front end with the multimeter. And then we may even just from there try and power it up and see what happens, see what voltage drop we get across here. And therefore what currents are actually going through there. And if we find that it's way beyond 9.5 milliamps, we know that we've got a problem in there. We'll then swap out the tube and see if that sorts out the problem. If it does, then I'm quite happy. If it doesn't, then we may have to open this up. Now, there are various points that we can access from here, and some of them you can see right here. This is one of them, the chassis, the ground. A lot of that front end circuit actually connects to ground. So we have a ground point. We have the B plus input point, which is that point there. We've got the two connectors coming out here, which is the, uh, the really the signal output, and that's only from one of the IF transformers inside here, one of the coils inside here. So that, that really doesn't tell, tell us that much. But we also have all the pins that are on the tube and the pins can act as a very good uh, reference point and connect connection point to do continuity checking. So that's what we're gonna do now.
the moment of truth. We've uh, done all that checking on the FM section. I found nothing wrong with it with the exception of the one resistor, which was actually lower than the rating. I incorrectly mentioned in the uh, earlier section that it uh, measured correct. It doesn't. So I've replaced that and now I'm ready to test it. Now what I'm going to do or have done is I've connected an antenna. I've connected, uh, I've put in the, uh, the tubes. The ECC85 I've replaced with one that I know works. I just don't want to risk it. So um, at the moment what I have is I've got these two multimeter leads connected across that resistor. And if you recall, uh, we expect a maximum of about 20 volts drop, which will mean uh, just under 10 milliamps of current. And I'm going to move back, get the multimeter in the screen, and uh, we'll test this. So I've got the radio connected to the dim bulb tester. I've got it on maximum limit. There's only the one light bulb in series, the 40 watt light bulb. So this thing is really, really restricted if there's a short or something more dramatic. I've switched FM on in the front and the piano keys, and I'm just going to switch on the dim bulb test and see what we get. Here goes. The dim bulb tester has gone bright and is now dimming, which is what we expect. And this is going up, so that tube is starting to draw current. 11 volts. Don't worry about the negative, it's all relative. And we've got some noise. Is it worth listening to? Let's check. Ha! Okay, we're receiving. And at the moment, we've got about 5 milliamps going through there. No excess current, but I do have full limit on here, so I'm going to give it one more light bulb. And it's gone up to 15 volts drop. The actual voltage going into the set is 198 volts and it's drawing 170 milliamps. I'm going to give it another light bulb. Now we've got 217 going in. 17 volts drop. So far so good. Let me try to tune something here. Actually it's pretty clear. Let me go to one of the more prominent stations. Problem is, I don't know where it is on this dial. There's no dial plate, dial glass. Ah. Brilliant. Stay away from music. That's fabulous. We've got FM back. And it's pretty clear. And we've got 17 volts drop. I'm going to do something here. I'm going to bypass the limit altogether. Let me put the volume down. I'm going to bypass this limit altogether. Now it's still on the isolation transformer, so it's still slightly safe. Let's hit it. So the set is now seeing 231 volts. It's drawing 220 milliamps, and we've got 19.6 volts across there. Okay. 
Okay, I'm happy. I'm really, really pleased. This thing seems to have done the job. I think um, it was probably a problem with the with the tube because nothing else is creating excessive current. We've got uh, just under 20 volts. So we've got just under 9.5 milliamps. It's supposed to be maximum 9.5. So this thing is, uh, is working. It's working. That's fantastic. Let me see what uh, actual B plus we have going in there. If I connect this to ground, So the FM section just before that resistor is seeing 203 volts. What is it supposed to be? It's uh, according to the schematic, it doesn't really say, does it? Well, it does actually. 201 or 190, and I believe the brackets is for FM. So. It's actually a little bit high, which is to be expected because this thing is set for, um, let me just check this again. No, on medium wave, it's supposed to be 201 volts. And on FM, it's supposed to be 190 volts. At that point, if I'm not mistaken, yep. Okay, so it's seeing a slightly higher voltage, nothing dramatic. Let me just push uh, medium wave here. And what that's done is it actually cut the supply. Yes, that's to be expected. It actually cuts the supply to the FM section before that uh, resistor. So we're seeing nothing on there. Right. I'm very pleased. So this is uh, the FM done. What I'm going to do is, uh, what do I have to do still? I still have to do the alignments. I'll do uh, pretty quick alignments on this one, I think. I'll see how it goes. Um, I need to do cleaning, final cleaning, and then put this thing together and give it a final test. So um, I'm happy to, to say that uh, my biggest concern has uh, come to naught. And we have a working set. And we have very, very good FM reception. The stuff we were hearing here was with the, just a piece of wire as an antenna. So um, it should be a lot better with a proper antenna. So once again, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I certainly did. And um, thank you for your support uh, on Patreon, which I've been quite surprised with since I uh, opened the, the account. If you do want to subscribe, do go to Patreon and then, uh, you know, share, like and all that jazz. And I'll see you again soon for the next video in this restoration. Bye for now.